Again, I require philosophical distance and an aesthetic sensibility. I can't say everything that I believe within the span of one hour. I hope you understand that. I've merely scratched the surface of things that I write about. I fill 400 page books, you know, and they're large pages, and some people only read a few portions of it and give up. So there is so much I have to say, admittedly. I hope you understand that. Now I have to go into another thing. I believe in a free community, and in a free society, and a rational society, and in an ecological society, and a spiritual society as well, as an artist. Would you believe that? I believe that all people who are, well, call them revolutionaries if you like, call them people who want to change the world, call them social ecologists, use whatever language you like, socialists, anarchists, communists, uh, with a small c, of course. Christians, call them what you like, are artists. I also have a rich aesthetic sense. So I can distance myself philosophically. I can look at mine enemies and I will not turn the other cheek. I will not turn the other cheek. I don't want to play with them, okay? I don't want to participate with them until they change their ways. I have that right, democratically speaking, not to know people as well as to know people, as other people have the right not to know me as well as know me. That is their privilege. And so I do fight them. I don't like Edward Teller. I don't like him at all. I don't like Ronald Reagan. I really have a personal aversion toward him, and particularly Richard Nixon. <laughs> so, you know, I do have my dislikes and dislikes, and my hates and my loves. Okay? And then sometimes I have very mixed feelings about people who influenced my own life. This involves Again, sophisticated innocence, insofar as your sophistication gives you the philosophic distance to be watching as well as participating, to be outside yourself and looking at yourself as well as being inside yourself and being involved. The word is philosophic distance. It's an old Hellenic conception. You know, the first thing Socrates said is that I know nothing. But you know, and I know he was lying. He <laughs> said, so the only thing I know is that I know nothing. <laughs> but he knew a hell of a lot. Okay? He wasn't manipulating people either. But it was a real way of saying, I stand apart and assume ignorance in myself and assume distance in myself to any problem. So a lot of things have to be worked out in this whole relationship of what we call sophisticated innocence or what Nietzsche called cynical innocence. Does that explain anything? It's dialectical distance. It's a demonic thing in which you can love and at the same time hate in which you can feel anger and at the same time feel sympathy. These things are eminently human. The question is within what framework are they contained and how do they symmetrically organize themselves and form a coherent whole. I don't believe that it will be possible to eliminate a combative relationship. I don't mean physical violence. I mean a combative relationship and develop a truly participatory relationship in a world that is itself terribly divided and fragmented and at war with itself, ruler and ruled, imperialist and victim of imperialism, ethnic groups that are at war with each other, etc., 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 obviously. But at minimally speaking, I believe that we can develop some damn good habits at home, so to speak. We can develop some damn good habits in our community, so to speak. That I think we can start with. And until we begin to make these transformations now, Whatever we try to do afterward, after we've made the great millennial change, will become a startling to us and so unpracticed and we'll be so incapable of doing it that, as in the case of the Russian Revolution, we'll wind up with a bigger catastrophe than existed under Tsarism. That's my personal belief.